Hi, this is Isaiah Charlinger. Today I will be talking about racism and its broad spectrum. My thesis statement, first and foremost, is racism is done in an assortment of ways, but most people don't understand racism beyond the news, social media, or simple protest. Racism exists in many, many ways, and it is built. It was built into the foundation of this country, and it stems from slavery to the 1960s to the fight for inequality, and it still exists today. It's just been dwindled down over time. First you had slavery, and then you had segregation, and then you have social issues and police brutality and all these other things. So racism is still a big part of in America's society, but it's just been dwindled down into many different ways. And that's what mainly I will talk to you about today. First, my main point will be on racism and the impacts it has on physical and mental health. Second will be the color bias to racism and denying it, and that's one of the problems of why we still are what we are, that other cultures deny racism. Third would be racism is a big problem in healthcare, and it won't be changed until it's identified like many of the other aspects of racism. Racism has an impact on physical and mental health, and people's color bodies to it does not help its cause. Just as in the healthcare industry, racism won't be identified, racism can't be solved until it's identified and brought to the forefront. The first point I'll talk about is racism and the many factors that it has on physical and mental health. And my first article talked about the examination of healthcare and criminal justice system on African American and Caribbean descent. And it had two inquiries. The first one was the Ritchie inquiry, which was following the murder of Jonathan Zito by Christopher Clarnes. And then you had the Prince inquiry, which was Examine in the circumstances of Orville Lakewood's death in the Broadmoor Special Hospital, which were both conducted in 1994. The Prince Inquiry found that racism was a future service position, and the Ritchie Inquiry found that racism was more equivocal. And in today's society, racism exists in many, many ways. You have jobs telling you no just because you're a skin color, but you see the person who's just as qualified as you, or maybe even underqualified as you, get the job simply because of their skin color. And it is, it's just like, for instance, you got PWIs. Some say that they allow, they want to keep that going, so they deny more African American students than they let in. And it's uh, also you have education, the disparity between education. Most Caucasian kids are subjected to get higher education than minorities. You have private schools which are built because they know the demographics that can afford them. And most kids you see at private school. It's Caucasians. The only reason you see African Americans there is mostly because we're playing sports or bringing money into the school and stuff like that. Also, you have exists within sports. You have they're offering the third round pick to get coaches into it. And then you have the minorities that I mentioned earlier in the NBA. For me personally, I play golf. Most people think they laugh at me when I say I play golf because they think that only a certain race of Caucasians is supposed to play golf. I've never experienced racism on the golf course, but I, I feel that it's still weird when people give me looks because I'm the only one out there, or they don't think I can play, but then once I show them I can play a little bit, they change that look and they change their whole attitude. And that's one of the problems. People need to stop assuming or breaking down into demographics that this should do that, this race should do that. And then, like instant in the NFL, you had one of them feel they were playing for a plantation. Because the owner was still treating them like slavery, but they were just getting paid. And just a different version of what other people assumed was racism. Because it, all you see these owners are white and the players are black. Just different is they're getting paid. Along with the mental and physical effects from within, there is color violence on the outside, outside which certainly doesn't help its claws. Color blindness and people denying it, it, it just makes the problem worse. And my second article talked about that. They had two uh, inquiries. They had college students in 1997 was looked at social attitudes of college students. Then they had the response from a 1998 Detroit study. And what they found was workshops on racism along with education reforms, they're not enough to change the system of racism. And then we need to fight and demand for power. And once we do that, that's when real change can happen. All the social media posts, um, People saying Black Lives Matter and all this other stuff, but they're not getting out there and fighting the action. And until people get out there and fight the action 
and join the movement and just don't do all this talking, nothing's going to change. Also, when we need more people from other demographics to see the problem. And when the numbers grow, that's when people listen. There's strength in numbers. A little number is not going to give them much change. They'll just blow it off. But when it grows to millions and millions of people, that's when change can actually happen. And until the numbers grow, nothing's going to change. It's still going to be the same old ways. They're just going to find different ways to institute racism into America. Once other cultures feel the racism and feel like it's time for a change and we need to get out of the old ways, it'll change. Yes, racism is not as blatant as it used to be, but they just built it into different ways and telling you, no, you can't have a job or no, you can't do this or that. They just tell you no. And that brings me to my last point. Along with color bonds between people is also racism is a blatant problem in healthcare. And that's a big, big problem. Most people who don't have health care or, or minority descent, and it's simply because they cannot afford it. You had Obamacare, which was great, and it was getting people involved, and people were looking forward to it, and people enrolled in it. And that was a good thing. But then you had our former president who tried to take it away from many Americans who needed it. And what most people don't know is Caucasians are still a big part of people not on health care. It's not just blacks. Caucasians have to recognize some of them are not on health care and have the health care issue too. Most Caucasians are blind to it because they feel like, oh no, it's not us, so don't worry about it. We're fine. But it's also them just... They don't have health care. still in poverty. Poverty exists in all aspects, not just in African Americans, which is mostly Democrat. If you look at the numbers, you'll be like amazed. If people had more education on it, they will understand the problem. But they don't have the proper education. They just think it's this way and that way. Once you read on how things really are, it can lead to change. It can understand that. And like, for instance, yeah, but people who, they don't want health care because they, then they will be in poverty and they won't have money to live. So until that is identified, the proper balance, so it doesn't take a whole person check to just have health care, that it won't change. And people don't want to pay for it because, and people need to pay for health care because they can't afford the hundreds of thousand dollars of medical bills that they need to survive because then the hospital could deny them proper service because they don't have the proper health care. And that's one of the problems. And until we find a way to balance that out, it won't change. And for me personally, I think if you did it like taxes to where the top pay more and the bottom pay less, it can balance out the system so that everybody can have the proper health care they can see and don't be denied surgeries and all this just because they simply can't afford it. So I hope you enjoyed and learned something about racism and its physical and mental aspects along with the color body that exists and and racism in healthcare and how we can't change until we identify the issues. And my ending quote would be from James Baldwin. Not everything that is faced can be changed, but nothing can be changed until it is faced. Thank you, and I hope you have a